So Jamie, there's a great deal of talk about automation and bionic organization. What is that? Yeah, so I mean, I think fundamentally it's, it's sort of what we see sort of the evolution of organizations really as, as they become more digital and data-driven organizations. Um, so not so much just about they do things in pockets where they look at it, but actually what is, what is, how do you establish a culture uh, of really bringing both machines and humans together uh, across all the activities of the business? And you know, I think it you know, really is sort of an evolution on what we've been talking about for you know, the last decade uh, around the future of insurance. So how does it really apply in, in, our, in our space? And you know, there are really three things that we sort of laid out in that, which I think this is, we've seen incredible advancements and we'll continue to see an acceleration in as it relates to this human machine uh, interactions. And the first is really around customer revolution. And, but we've moved now from just, not just understanding our customers, it's important to have an outside in view, but actually, you know, rather than looking at sort of the population or different elements of it, we can actually, you know, model all the individual customers and what it means for everything that which we do. The second piece is around information advantage. So how does it, you know, how do we really use information to improve the decision processes across all aspects of our organization? Right, the cycle time and the effectiveness of decision making. Right. So how do we, how do you uh, augment? You know, how do you, how do you automate? Um, those different things that are happening. And it all really comes together around the business models uh, that people will look at. And as insurers, this is about moving from the sort of probabilistic to deterministic. So when you think about those customers, what are the things, you know, we've always been about risk management and how we do it, but now what are the things that they can control and what can't they control? Increasingly more and more is becoming, you can put in their hands to control it. And then a deeper understanding of that probabilistic or the remaining that which you cannot control how do we actually look at that in a more meaningful way and apply that, whether that be in how we think of wellness, how do we think of mobility in, in vehicles and transport, how we think of sort of the, you know, the evolution of the industrial uh, piece around protection uh, and performance. And so some of these things you've been talking about, you've been seeing it across, you know, beyond insurance. John, sure. what are some of the things that you're seeing with the bionic organization that Jamie's been talking about? Yeah, I tell you, it's amazing because if you, if you take the long view and you say, look, uh, one of the great inventions of mankind person kind, uh, has been the creation of the large industrial enterprise. And the logic underneath that is, in terms of the, the relationship between people and machines, has been suck stuff out of my brain, put it into the machine. Watch me do something, make the steam shovel do it, right? That's been the dominant thing. And it's brought all kinds of great stuff, like this, you know, high quality suit, not that expensive, you know, the tiles, everything, like has come out of that thinking. Great returns to capital, jobs, the whole routine. We're entering into a bionic organization is so important is we're entering a whole new realm. And what that realm is, is we're not sucking our brains out and putting it into machines, sucking our labor out, putting it into the device. What we're doing is we're having a dialogue. Everything's going to be smart. Your car is going to be smart. Your house is going to be smart and all that other stuff. Organizations are going to have to adjust to what does it really mean when you're having a dialogue with machines and how do I look at the whole system, not just taking a task and putting it into the machine. And that's a total mindset shift. And if you look in the history of, of commerce, you look at wonderful uh, historians like Alfred Chandler, who actually chronicled the development of managerial capitalism. We need a new Al Chandler, right? We need new thinking about what does it really mean? Where's value going to go? What's the customer experience going to be? What's going to be the relationship between what's within my C corporation and the intelligent network that I plug into? What's the government going to do? Things like that. So I think we're just at the, we're at the starting line. Just like when the Watt steam engine was coming in, if you will, the Watt steam engine, the railroads, and so forth, you know, that confluence created a, a massive set of innovations around managerial capitalism, and that's where we are today. Mm -hmm.